Good afternoon and welcome back to our third session for the day uh, at the Vic South Online Star Party. Today, we're going to, this afternoon, we're going to be doing a solar session with Russell Cockman from the ASV and he's going to share the sun with us. A little bit cloudy at the moment, but he has managed to, uh, about a, a, few, a half hour or so ago, record some sun and if the sun decides to poke its head out, we'll do some live, live streaming again. Uh, if you have any questions for Russell, uh, regarding the sun, place them in the comments and, and we'll do his best to answer. Uh, and as I've been uh, going on again about uh, at every stream, don't forget raffle tickets, Skywatcher, Star Adventurer, uh, Motorized Mount, donated by Skywatcher Australia and TSA Outdoors and the iOptron Q Pro tri with tripod donated by Sidereal Trading. So uh, let's bring Russell into the stream. Good afternoon, Russell. Hello, Mark, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, so uh, if um, anyone uh, watching hasn't done uh, any solar observation before, please, uh, it is very, very dangerous. You could easily damage your eyes unless you're using proper uh, equipment, especially designed for safe solar viewing. So if you have any doubt about your equipment, whether it is safe for your eyes, do not use it. Uh, get some uh, professional advice, i.e. from myself or uh, folks at uh, ASA or uh, ASV. So please do not do it if there is any doubt about uh, whether your equipment is safe for solar viewing. Okie dokie. So um, we, I'm uh, what a, bit, a little bit about, uh, well, start again. <laughs> So I live about 6K from the uh, centre of Melbourne. So uh, we've got some blue skies at the moment. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to um, show you the sun and uh, we'll take it from there. So here we have it, a little bit moody, as you can see at the moment, some clouds passing through, but... You can still see that sunspot. Yes, there we are. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is real time viewing. And Mark, I, I hope you're getting a, a, a smooth feed. We are a beautiful are. smooth feed, and Excellent. I can tell because I can see the clouds moving smoothly past. So Absolutely. that is beautiful. Oh, look at that! Beautiful. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. There's the sun in real time, and the sun is slowly coming out of its uh, minimum activity that uh, we've had for the last uh, two, maybe three years, and we're starting to see some some largish sunspots and some complex sunspots. And just to put things into context. And what, what I can do is I can actually zoom in on this area just by by doing that and okaying it. And there we are. We can zoom into this. So there's the clouds still passing through, a little bit of uh, turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere is causing things to, the image to wobble around a little bit. But here we have. And uh, this sunspot group, it's given a name, a number. This is AR277. No, 2781 off the top of my head, AR, which means active region 2781. And to put things into perspective, this uh, sunspot here, uh, you could, we could probably fit an Earth or two into that easily. And uh, this area here, several Earths could fit into that, just to give you an idea that the Earth is not necessarily small, but the sun is huge. And hopefully you can see all this... Uh, area around here and uh, perhaps i should just go back a step what at the moment we're looking at the sun in hydrogen alpha the light of hydrogen but uh it is through a monochrome camera so we're not seeing the beautiful uh, red uh, hydrogen alpha but uh, that uh, redness has been converted into just shades of gray and uh, really um this means that the chip is working all of the time Every photon that the chip receives through the uh, the ASV's hydrogen alpha telescope is uh, registering uh, photons, so we're seeing a monochrome uh, image. And of course, uh, with that monochrome image, I can add some color at the end uh, to make it a nice yellow or red, as uh, as my heart desires. But uh, so the but the advantages of monochrome imaging is, as I've already said, every uh, pixel on the the chip is uh, registering uh, photons. If this was a color camera, then uh, half of the pixels are registering green, 
a quarter of them are registering red and the other quarter are registering blue. So therefore, four pixels go together to make one color pixel, and hence the resolution is affected somewhat. So here we have it, our beautiful sun. And uh, hopefully you're all laughing your heads off because I'm in my own little tent here. Anyone who's tried to, to look at a laptop screen, <laughs> screen in uh, daylight will realize how difficult it is to see anything on those screens. But here we are. I've, uh, I'm have uh, i shrouded a little um, uh, towel here just to um, reduce the amount of uh, sunlight falling onto uh, my laptop screen as much as possible so we can see what's going on. Now, hopefully you will put your thumbs up and say, what a beautiful uh, view. Of it our is a star. lovely view. We've got Absolutely. we've got uh, a lot of people watching. That's excellent, excellent. Welcome and uh, good on you for uh, taking the time out to observe the sun. So, in a little bit of detail, what are we looking at here? Once again, just to point out this sunspot here, we could probably fit one or two Earths into that, and maybe uh, four Earths would fit along the length of this uh, sunspot here. Now, these two sunspots are actually related to one another. How do sunspots occur? Well, the sun is just a, a huge, complicated magnet. And when the uh, internal magnetic fields uh, break through the so-called surface of the sun, where those magnetic field, uh, field lines break through, that cools down that region ever, ever so slightly by just a few hundred degrees. And just because of contrast, that, uh, that region appears darker than the surroundings. So although these sunspots appear dark, they're only a few hundred degrees cooler than the average region that we're looking at, which is about five and a half thousand Kelvin. Five and a half thousand uh, Kelvin, pretty hot by uh, our own standards. Um, but And this uh, sunspot here is, as I said, probably a couple of hundred degrees cooler than that, maybe 5,200, 5,300 Kelvin. Now, looking around the sunspot, you can see all this uh, mottled area. That's just clouds passing through. So that is actual structures on the sun that we are seeing with our own eyes through the ASV's Hydrogen Alpha Solar Telescope. And I'm afraid this is going to be pretty much uh, <laughs> what we're going to see today. It's, it's just, it is, uh, unfortunately, the clouds uh, moving in and out. And some clouds moving through. But there we are. Now you can see these whiter areas, lighter areas. So these are called flares. So these are explosions on the sun equivalent to hundreds of thousands of atom bombs taking place but these are fairly what we would say are low energy flares but imagine what uh, we're going to see as the sun's activity rises over the next few years where the amount of energy stored in sunspots is going to be thousands of times more than what we're seeing today and uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, showing you more of the sun as the uh, as the years roll on uh, towards solar maximum, because we're going to see lots more sunspots, more complex sunspots. And the more complex the sunspot uh, group is, means the more energy is going to be stored in that, and more energy that can be released during an explosion. And hopefully you realize that when these explosions take place, huge clouds, perhaps billions of tons of solar stuff will be blasted into space. And if that explosion is uh, directed towards Earth, then that blast of solar stuff will pass by the Earth and perhaps lead to uh, some auroral activity, some aurorae, aurorae um, aurora australis here in the southern hemisphere, aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere. And uh, if it's a, a large and uh, energy packed uh, cloud of uh, solar particles passing by, then uh, it is uh, likely we can see uh, the southern lights from uh, southern Australia, Melbourne, Adelaide, central Victoria. Oh, that would be fun. And, and it would be yeah. extraordinary. Um, the, oh, going I was just to say, it looked like it got cloudy again, but it looks like it's just clearing up a touch again. Um, I can crank up the gain to see through those uh, clouds. There we are, that's the beauty of online uh, video. I can uh, can crank up the gain just to uh, magnify the, uh, the number of photons that are coming through. And here we are, it's a little bit noisier now because I've cranked up the gain, but you can see the, uh, the detail on this layer of the sun we're looking at. And this is actually called the chromosphere, not the 
dazzling, brilliant sun that we see with our own eyes. That's that is light from the photosphere, and this is light from the from the chromosphere, a layer of the sun about oh. uh, ten thousand kilometers. You hit a clear patch of sky oh. there. There we are. Just adjusting the uh, the gain. There we go. So we could get crazy adjusting the gain, etc., etc. Et we were. You, you could just sit there and jump, jump it up and down. Did you want to? While we're waiting for a clear patch, did you want to pop up um, your the pre-recorded ones you, you've you've taken? Uh, I, I can do, Mark, but um, yeah. they won't show any more detail than what we've got here. Oh, okay. Well, let's leave it with All this right. then. But, uh, what I can this. do is just look. Uh, maximize the screen to show the entire sun ah there we go it's back again so there we are there's the entire sun today it's very and good that, image today it's nice nice and very, crisp. very um, surprisingly good given the amount of um, atmospheric uh, turbulence there is of course uh, atmospheric turbulence is the bane of uh, astronomers and it tends to be worse during the daytime because the earth heats up and gives up heat to the atmosphere, causes uh, hot regions of the atmosphere to rise up, and we see that as uh, as turbulence. So uh, if there are any questions coming through, Mark? Um, not just yet. Yeah, I think everyone's just enjoying. There's a lot of love hearts, that's for sure. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Keep them coming. So if anyone's got any questions about the sun, not necessarily what we're seeing here, but just in general about the sun, um, post them in the comments because Russell will eagerly answer them. Um, I'd be really delighted to. Yeah, there you go. Cut down on the gain. And uh, from a point of view of uh, context and scale, 109 Earths can fit across the diameter of the sun as we're uh, seeing it in our field of view at the moment. 109 Earths. It's, as I said before, that's not, a, uh, that's not necessarily saying that the Earth is small. Anyone that's traveled from here to uh, halfway around the planet, we'll realize it is a big place, but it's just indicating how huge our sun is. 1.4 million kilometers in diameter, meaning that uh, over 1 million Earths can fit inside our sun, which is just a huge yep. ball of hot Now that air. 1 million Earths, is that yeah. 1 million Earths in, in the sphere of the sun or 1 million Earths in the flat Plane, circular plane we within, see of the sun within the sphere within the volume of there these we go. million earths yes oh, so we have a question are they the only spots on the sun and i'm assuming that means at the moment so at the at moment the is that the only activity we know of happening on the sun right now i i, I believe so yes there might be a, uh, one little spot um further away but that is pretty much the uh, most interesting part of the sun today that we can see and it is very interesting given that uh, last year for example uh, almost 80 percent of the days last year there were no sunspots to be seen on the sun at all so almost 80 percent of the days last year 2019 there were no spots to be seen on the sun at all so uh, this is a well a wonderful um, example of uh, what the sun can uh, show us and things will only get better as uh, as the sun's activity rises towards maximum in the next uh, two to three years. So where are we in position where, as we're going around the sun? What's our do, do you know how far away we are from the sun at the moment? I do. Yeah. Well, well, the sun's orbit is almost circular, so uh, it means that the Earth's distance from the sun doesn't change that much. But on average, uh, we're 150 million kilometers from the sun. 150 million kilometers uh, we have a, I have a question for you from John Dardeman is the disturbance caused by Earth's heat worse in the morning when the Sun is rising um, and that part of the earth would be the hottest or am I wrong well hi John good question thanks very much for that I would say in general uh, the atmospheric seeing is better in the morning because the uh, the earth the, the ground hasn't had as much, as much chance to uh, absorb solar energy and warm up so I, I would tend to say that in the afternoon uh, the seeing is worse right about now <laughs> to um, to the uh, leading up to um, sunset and um, I would have very much have liked to have um, uh, shown the Sun earlier today 
But um, from where I live in Elwood and, and uh, my apartment block, uh, the sun doesn't rise for me until about 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. So we're getting the best uh, view of the sun from my apartment right now. So in general, uh, the, uh, the best seeing is in the morning, um, and that would include um, at night time as well. The best seeing tends to occur in the hours leading up to sunrise and the hours, a uh, couple of hours, three hours after sunrise. Okay. That the question. That's a good answer to the question. Yeah, we've got some heavy cloud at the moment playing funny buggers with us. So we just have to bear with us while we try and someone needs to get out with a big fan and blow the clouds away. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so please keep those questions coming. Anything you want to know about the sun, um, we're more, Russell's more than happy to answer those questions. Now, I've got, um, Russell, while we're waiting for some clear sky, I've yep. got, um, you know, obviously, you know, Paul Hayes from the yes, ASSA. I've, I can bring up his website, which has got some amazing solar images that you could probably talk sure. about if you wanted to. Absolutely. While we just wait for a little patch of clear sky. I'll just bring that up and then... Um, so... Let's get back and I'll share my screen. There we go. Can we see that? Oh, hang on. Here we go. Yes. Can we see that? Can you see that, Russ? Well, there we so are. That's a, this is an image a that... Wonderful um, sunspot group there. Yeah, so this is Beautiful an image shot. we took in 2013. Uh, that makes sense because um, that was getting towards the end of the last uh, solar maximum. So the sun's activity cycle is over about 11 years uh, from the point of view of uh, number of sunspots that we see on the sun. And uh, so 2013 was getting towards the end of uh, the last solar maximum. And what a beautiful uh, image that is. It Gorgeous. Is, yes. And got, uh, go on. I'm going to bring another one up. So here we go. Here's, this might be a good one for you to, to talk Ooh, about. Very nice. Look at that. Yeah. Really fantastic. Look at the uh, amount of uh, shades of grey in that. There's far more than 50 in this, for sure. <laughs> I reckon, um, oh, thousands thousands of shades of grey. Yep, thousands of them. Uh, <laughs> Maybe 65,000 shades of grey if it's so-called 16-bit uh, grayscale. But there's a beautiful sunspot here with lots of little sunspots around. Now, please bear in mind, every one of these dark areas is indicative of uh, a magnetic field line breaking through the surface. And the more magnetic field lines that break through, the more they can get tangled up and eventually those magnetic field lines can recombine and that energy that's been stored up will will be released uh, explosively and send stuff uh, blasting into space. That's most uh, beautiful. And these whiter areas, as, as I've uh, already indicated in the live solar viewing, they are indicative of what we would call solar flares. So areas where explosions are actually taking place, thousands, hundreds of thousands of times more powerful than, than an atom bomb. Just in this little area here, which is, would be several uh, uh, several times the size of the Earth, and uh, wonderful over here. So we, have, we have a question here: um, okay. Which way are the sunspots or sun rotating, and is it coming into alignment with Earth? Uh, Sergio B, a very very good question, and thank you very much for that. The sunspot group that we've seen today is actually uh, rotating um, earthwards, meaning that. Um, it's towards the limit of the sun at the moment, but over the next uh, week or so, that sunspot will uh, be rotating uh, because of the sun's rotation, um, more to an earth-facing uh, orientation or, or a position. So should there be a significant flare slash explosion from the sun, then that, um, that uh, blast of uh, hot gas uh, is called a coronal mass ejection, CME. 
and um, so uh, it could uh, lead to some auroral activity in in a week, ten days or so. But it all depends on um, what that sunspot region does. So very good question, Sergio B, and I hope that uh, answers your question. So it is coming into alignment with the Earth over the next uh, week or so. So carrying on with Paul's let's, beautiful let's photo. Let's find another photo of Paul's. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Have a look at this one, shall we? Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It is absolutely stunning. So I'll let you describe this one. Look, it's indescribable, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, uh, wonderful, beautiful uh, image, lots and lots of gorgeous detail on there, and it's, it's a very, very lively sun at this time, and uh, most of, most eye-catching of lots and lots of eye-catching detail is this prominence over here. The one now, on the left-hand side? Yes, uh, yeah. yes, exactly. I, I'm, I'm actually moving my... Uh, <laughs> my <computer around. laughs> you can't see that, so I should no. see this in doing that. The one but to yes, the left hand side, yeah. A beautiful prominence. So that is an, an indicator of uh, lots of solar activity, uh, magnetic uh, field lines, uh, source of an explosion, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that has um, is blasting stuff into space, but uh, most likely that stuff will uh, fall back into the sun in the, over the next uh, few days uh, when that picture was taken. But uh, lots of beautiful uh, detail, and uh, would like to point out a little bit uh, left of centre. You've got this dark uh, circular feature. Yes. So that is called a filament. So filaments are simply fo um, prominences seen silhouetted against the surface of the sun. So, uh, so yep, they're nothing. Um, so nothing mysterious about them. They are simply uh, prominences silhouetted against the uh, slightly brighter uh, surface of the sun. Lots and lots of active regions. Beautiful stuff. Let's see what very, very we, uh, we can find here. Oh, there. Let's look at this one from 2013. There we are. Another uh, another time around about solar maximum. Lots and lots of beautiful uh, structures on the uh, the chromosphere in this case some smaller prominences around the edge all the way around the visible edge here if you look carefully you'll see prominences some some light, uh, some bright ones some uh, fainter ones and this uh, image is particularly uh, lovely because almost it has a three-dimensional look about it it does doesn't it yeah the, the sun has a, a, a spherical appearance about it, and that uh, filament that we are seeing there towards the lower left clearly is above the uh, surface of the sun. Yep, that it's one there, yep. clearly uh, above it. Um, no shadow, of course, because uh, there's no shadows on the sun. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Can't catch shadows on itself. <laughs> That's correct, yep. But what a, a very, very busy shot. Lots and lots of beautiful activity there. Let's, well done. Let's, let's have a look at this Cairns solar eclipse. Yeah, look at that. So beautiful. Tell us a bit about <coughs> solar eclipses. Well, very, very hard to describe a total solar eclipse to someone that hasn't uh, witnessed one, but uh, it is one of nature's glorious uh, spectacles to have the moon align perfectly with the brilliant uh, dazzling sun and to, to block that out so that we can see uh, structures around the uh, edge of the sun the uh, the corona in this case and uh, prominences and the, the structures in the uh, in the uh, the corona the corona being the sun's outer atmosphere and in fact the earth in its orbit is passing through the um the sun's um Corona, sun's outer atmosphere. We don't we don't realise that, but we are. The uh, the sun extends a long, long, long way into space. But look at those beautiful structures. Mm. What's happened, Mark? Oh, no, I'm just saying it's, it is very good. So, have we got any sunlight back? Do you know, Russ? Um, not enough uh, to see any any sun at the moment. It's starting to get brighter here. So. Yeah. 
And I know you're not far from me, so I know if it gets really sunny here, <laughs> we should be right. True enough. Well, we had a pretty good burst of uh, clear did, sky. Let's, yeah. let's see what else. Uh, pretty um, cloud-bound at the moment here as I have a look from under my tent. There we go. Let's have a look at this one. This is a beautiful image of Paul's. Uh, Can you see that one? Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely phenomenal. Once again, uh, that, it is said that a picture is worth a thousand words, but this is worth a hundred thousand words, I would say. It's uh, fantastic. It's a beautiful shot. So this this line here. That filament, a, yeah. Yeah, that that's filament. Big, isn't it? Yes. That's a big one, that, isn't it? That well, it looks like it's going about halfway across the sun. So Ooh. hundred thousand kilometers. Therefore, seven hundred thousand kilometers. Oof. Fantastic. Well, and uh, look, people that are averse in astronomy and the sun and the universe, uh, we have to uh, talk uh, talk in large numbers just to uh, try and quantify things so uh, so i really i don't apologize for uh, uh talking in large numbers because that's what we have to talk in when we describe things on the sun and bear in mind our sun is a relatively small star uh, a little bit above average but um and uh, just right for us here on earth take a long time to drive seven hundred thousand kilometers that's for sure Absolutely. Uh, my car's done about 370,000, so it'd be about halfway to the sun. And how long have you had your car for? Well, 2002, it, uh, it was registered, so uh, yeah, 18, 18. So, yep. 18 years of on and off driving, so maybe yep. in another 18 years. Um, well, that's uh, halfway yeah. across the sun, other than... The uh, distance of halfway across the sun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but I've got nowhere, nowhere near... Uh, even uh, scratching the uh, the surface of the distance between Earth and the Sun, 150 million kilometers. Mm. That's a long way yeah. when you think about it. A long, long way. Yeah. That's a beautiful image, Paul. Uh, beautiful, beautifully done, mm. wonderfully processed to bring out the uh, the dynamics of the Sun, the dynamic range of of uh, what's happening there. Absolutely beautiful. So I believe. Um, I've just had an email from Gavin. Yeah. And he has, so we'll bring us back up. He says he sent me some images on email that he has taken, some solar images he has taken with his Wonderful. equipment. He did put a comment up just before saying it's you're inspiring him to get his uh, his equipment going, um, but it's nine out of ten cloudy and cloudy in Epi and then lots of sweary in my, um icons so we're just looking up through my well, skylight and seeing what the clouds are like it's starting to break up a bit and we had I the sun anyway. here very very briefly um, we did yes yeah so uh so i've just received those or this image so i'm going to download yeah. this one this is mm -hmm. one of so let's have a look at one of um gavin's Beautiful. images shall we all right so gavin if you're there and i know you're there you can let us know um when just pop in the comments the details of when you took that image and what your equip, equipment was that you used and it's this one here that's that image there wonderful so that's i'm not sure whether that was taken today no i don't think that was taken today no <laughs> well we'll soon find out from gavin when he took it anyway we'll get him to put it put a that's comment a beauty. in there in the comment section. So a fair bit of activity there, isn't there? Very much so, yes. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, taken with uh, what we would term a white light filter over the front of the, the telescope, whether it's a refractor or a reflector. So, uh, so it's one of those uh, shiny, uh, aluminized sheets of plastic. Uh, I've got filter. one of them. That's how and I take mine. Same yeah, system, same it works, works beautifully, and uh, they're wonderful for seeing sunspots. In I fact, think we've in, got some sun back on yours, Russ. We have. We have. Let's, let's jump back there we over go. to that. There we go. 
There we are. Uh, no and just as we do at the cloud. All right. No worries. It's only, uh, it'll it'll pass. It'll pass. Yep. Yeah. So that photo that Gavin took was taken back in two thousand and fourteen. October uh, the was it tenth of January two thousand and fourteen. And we'll, I'm going to crank up the exposure and the gain here to see if there are any prominences. There we are. Yep. Oh, there uh, is up the top. Yeah. Around here, a couple up there, and uh, so I've had to crank up the gain a heck of a lot to see these. There it is. You can see That's it an indication there. of how relatively faint prominences are at the moment compared with the uh, the chromosphere of the sun. And there's that sunspot popping back in again. Yep. So the clouds are acting as a lovely little uh, attenuating filter on the... Uh, That's a big prominence up there, isn't it? Well, I can uh, zoom in on. I did notice one at around about 10 o'clock as well, a very small one. Right. Yep. What? And it looks like you're getting going to get some big patches of blue sky coming through now, Russell, which is good as well. So. Fabulous. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm blowing the clouds away over towards uh, away from you. So and Russell's in. You're in Elwood. I'm in. Um, I'm in Bentley. So we're not far away. Not far um, away. Wise, so if it's blue sky above me. It's going to be blue sky above you shortly. Here we are. Let's have a look at those. Oh, crank it up. There we are. Oh, look at that. So how tall do you think they would be? Oh, I reckon a couple of Earths would would fit in there. So, you know, 20,000, 30, 20, 30,000 kilometres high, that order of magnitude. Pretty impressive. Yep. Yeah. When you think about that. Not nearly as impressive as uh, Paul's uh, work, but uh, as I said, um, sun's activity is slowly rising, and uh, as the next two to three years, um, uh, works through, well, hopefully we'll see more, um, more brighter and uh, larger prominences. I think there was, if we can move some of these clouds on, I think there yeah. was a little one at about 10 o'clock or thereabouts, somewhere between 9 and 10 o'clock on the sun there. Mm. Oh, we've Let's crank it up. Out. I think while the clouds are there, you won't see it. But, yeah, it was a very small one I noticed. Okay. So for people with the ability to safely observe the sun, this is an, an ideal time to uh, start getting some practice in uh, observing the sun and taking some photos because uh, the sun's activity is starting to rise and uh, lots more interesting things will be visible on the sun over the next few years. I think... There we go. Beautiful. So we just need those clouds to just go away a bit more for us. <laughs> well, I can show some videos that I took earlier um, of that sunspot group. I think I will do that. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Right, so we're there. Um, private. Now, how do I get back to that? <laughs> right, it's uh, tricky. So where does it sh oh, share screen? That's it, yeah. Location window, this guy. This one's struggling. Takes a little bit of time to uh, work through it. Because bearing in mind, there was 500 frames per second on this video. All right. The poor, the poor old video program's got to crunch it. Too. <laughs> it's got to get it ready to go, does it? A second, you see. So it's got to, yep, it's got a bit of work to do. Let me know when it's ready. So at the moment, it's just a, <laughs> a, a, a witch's hat. Yes. Uh, here we go. We've got a question from um, 
Adi. I'll find out how to say that name eventually. I'll get it right. Someone will tell me. What equipment are you using? Uh, that's a wonderful question, and um, perhaps a little bit remiss of me not to show you a uh, a picture of it. But uh, it's a. Um, I'll see if I can find it. It's a 102 millimeter refractor with a special filter inside it to uh, to get rid of all the uh, brilliant sunlight, uh, so that only so that only the uh, wavelength of hydrogen, about 656 nanometers comes through so it allows us to see features on the sun that we can't see with one of those uh, metallized filters that goes over the front of the telescope and it's it's on a mount that is um, polar aligned and uh, tracking the sky so uh, it keeps the sun within the field of view so, so and, that, and I, I have a high quality astronomical video camera on the back end that uh, converts the uh, light effectively into a, a signal that that we can broadcast onto youtube and other places that, that video russ um, yes it much as it wasn't working yeah i'm not sure what happened there but it was just it was struggling i think yeah um so i think gavin yeah. has sent me another one to look at which i'll just download quickly and get open and, and we can have a quick peek at that one that he's got that he sent us very nice of you to send those through, Gavin. Much appreciated. And application window in this one. Yeah. So that one there. So beautiful. Some sunspots and solar flares. Yes. Filaments. Sunspot flares, prominences. Yeah. Very, very nice. Some filaments. Yeah. And so mm. very, very nice, Gavin. And uh, that's this image is a promise um, of what is to come uh, as solar activity rises uh, closer and closer to maximum over the next few years. How beautiful. It is a very nice very image, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, stop sharing that. There we go. Now, have you got your, your um, screen back up, Russ? Or? Can do. Yeah. Get that back up and see what we can see. So lots of cloud going through. It's a nice round ball. Now, what color is the sun, Russ? A lovely question. Um, so it's, it's yellow, a yellow color. Our sun is no, uh, known as a G2V star, and so G represents the color of the star, and uh, G-class stars are uh, yellowish, which means that's the, the kind of light that the sun emits in uh, most abundance. But, of course, to our, uh, our eyes, uh, that yellow is mixed in with red and blue and all the other colors of the rainbow, so it just appears as a dazzling white to our eyes. And how hot do we uh, does it get on the sun? What's the, what's the temperature inside the sun as opposed to the edge of the sun? Yeah, well, um, of course, we can't uh, look inside the sun to and take a sample of uh, the core of the sun, but uh, models of the core of the sun uh, imply, suggest that the uh, that temperature is about 14 or 15 million degrees. 14 to 15 million degrees because it's these temperatures and pressures that are required for uh, for hydrogen to fuse uh, ultimately into uh, atoms of helium these extremely uh, severe conditions uh, high temperatures in the millions of degrees and um, very ridiculously high pressures in order to uh, crush uh, atoms of hydrogen ultimately uh, four uh, atoms of hydrogen will ultimately fuse together to form one atom of helium uh, and uh, the emission of a significant amount of energy in doing that. And um, that uh, energy works its way uh, towards the surface of the sun. As it does so, it, uh, it gets shifted, gets cooled down, it gets uh, shifted to longer wavelengths and uh, 
it may take uh, many, 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 many thousands of years for that, for a, uh, a, a photon of light created in the core to ultimately make its way to the surface. You know, I just bang the uh, scope and, um, <laughs> and it comes out as ultraviolet rays, visible light, heat that we can feel. And there'll be some, uh, some X-rays as well. And maybe just a, a few gamma rays as well, but uh, and even some radio waves. So uh, really, all of the uh, wavelengths of light will uh, will reach Earth, uh, but uh, a lot of it will be just um, light and heat. And the temperature on well, um, the temperature on the surface of the sun, of which there are many, but the the brilliant photosphere is about six and a half. Sorry, five and a half thousand Kelvin. So that's the absolute scale of temperature, five and a half uh, thousand uh, degrees uh, Kelvin. And the chromosphere that we're looking at, we'll just back off again here, uh, is, a, is just a couple of hundred uh, degrees cooler than that. There we are, there's our active region. It's Looks like there's something happening. Yes, yeah, just, just, just there. Here. Yeah, yeah look, there. and also, also a bit further up towards the left there as well. Adjust the gain a little bit. So yes, uh, another. We wouldn't say it's a, a sunspot, but it's an area there that's a little bit hotter than the surrounding chromosphere. Here we are, and. You might, hopefully there's a, a question a questioner out there asking what causes all this mottling. So, yeah. what that's remember that, so we've got hot gas rising up uh, from the uh, from uh, lower regions in the sun. As it rises up, it uh, cools down a little bit and, and becomes a little bit more dense. So when it reaches the, the top of this layer, it's a little bit cooler and a little bit denser. And being a little bit cooler, it's a little bit darker. A little bit cooler and it appears darker and then it just sinks down and gets warmed up so there's this it's a convection cell you know hot gas rising up cooling down going back down um, not to the core but to a lower region where it heats up again and uh, so we're looking at convection cells of uh, hot gas rising up which are the, the lighter areas and cooler gas sinking down which are the darker areas so we're uh, so we're seeing the sun in action and uh, if we saw this exact same region 15 minutes from now, half an hour from now, uh, we would uh, see uh, clear changes in those structures because the sun is just a huge ball of gas and it's allowed to change its structures over time. So there was another, just a little bit further towards the, um, up towards sort of 10 to 11 near the edge, not quite near the edge, but in between the edge and that one, there was a, Look to me like that. Yeah, I can just see just in there. Is that anything? So a couple of filaments. So yep. uh, prominences that are seen silhouetted against the sun. As we've seen already, uh, the prominences are much less uh, uh, much less bright than the chromosphere. And in this shades of grey view, um, less bright equals cooler. Or, um, and uh, Less bright equals darker. So we've we've seen that we've had to increase the gain enormously to see prominences. That's because they're less bright and therefore they're cooler. So so when they are seen silhouetted against the sun, they appear as darker patches, as uh, Paul's uh, uh, pictures showed beautifully earlier mm. on. Are we able to zoom in on the sunspot now? And we've got a bit of Absolutely. a clear patch while yeah. while we can make hay while the sun shines. So Absolutely, no. Absolutely. There we are. Some flaring going on here. Low uh, energy. Some flaring, nevertheless. And you can start to see some structures. You know, oh. So the, uh, the chromosphere here is actually uh, following the magnetic lines of force. It's starting to curve and uh, show, uh, particularly around here, sort of structures coming out radially from that sunspot amazing that they can fit two earths inside that spot 
exactly. So, and these are relatively small sunspots. They um, get a lot bigger, don't they? Do, yes, and much more complex. What's the largest one you've seen? Cool. Um, it, it's, in fact, it's, it's quite hard to put a size to sunspots. And um, what, what is the largest one I've seen? Oh, gee, I'd have to say maybe 10 times the size of this. So you're looking at, oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of yeah. Earth. A lot of Earth to go into mm. here, yes. And I have to admit that one's memory uh, 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 tends to be a little bit uh, poor. Um, <laughs> uh, thinking back, maybe 10 years, five years, whatever. So, uh, but and I'm just moving the... Uh, just the center of that. Moving it around a bit, yeah. And I can, can zoom in a little bit more. That's amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, I I have uh, re recorded this um, area already, and uh, as a video, and so there are uh, computer programs that you can put that video in, and it comes up with a, an image, which is beautifully uh, detailed and structured. So I shall put that onto well Facebook. Uh, the, yes, uh, please the, do, and then, and then I'll Facebook. share it on the public one as well. Please do, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. That would be good. Well, good. Beautiful. I shall video that now as the clouds come through. <laughs> they'll they'll add, as, add a, work as a nice filter for you. Absolutely. So you can see Beautiful. record. 30 second of video, which is... More than enough. enough. And uh, 570 frames per second. So it's, yes, so it's w working quite hard. And Ooh. there's the temperature of the chip, about 41 degrees up there. Ooh. That's about an average temperature. Yep. But it's, I've got to say, it's hard work, this, both for the operator and for the equipment. <laughs> we need to get you a little tent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not going to say it can be like. Like Air Andy computer. uses. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to hide you in that. Because they better get really hot. That'd well, surprisingly, hot. Uh, they're designed to uh, work hot. I, I can't actually say what temperature they work at, but uh, they are designed to work at temperature. And uh, really, the, the safest way to observe the sun is through a hydrogen alpha telescope, because um, really, Nothing can break internally um, because everything is, is designed to work uh, as it does. So uh, there we have it. Beautiful. It's an absolutely lovely image, that. I'm glad we, we had some, um, some action on the sun today to show everybody. Absolutely. And, and uh, some clear patches through the cloud as well. Very it's much. Been good. Very much. Uh, so... And ladies and gentlemen, the great thing about solar observing is that there are, there are no late nights. No <laughs> you can wrong. sleep in and get up and... So solar scientists, they only need to work during the daytime. So the uh, night for sleeping, for rest. We, so have a question. we have a question, Russell. Please do. Terence wants to know, would you, would you recommend a dedicated sun scope or would a filter over his traditional Celestron telescope be good enough? Well, a filter over the front of the Celestron, excellent telescopes, uh, will show you the sunspots uh, beautifully, but it won't show you the structures that we're seeing right now. The uh, the mottling in the chromosphere, the, uh, the flaring around the sunspots, uh, and won't show you prominences around the edge. So, um, but there are uh, telescopes out there that uh, are dual purpose, so they can be used um, for nighttime observing, and uh, the hydrogen alpha filter can be added uh, to the scope uh, for um, hydrogen alpha observing. So it's really the best of uh, all worlds. These telescopes tend to be rather small, but you know, 60 millimeters or thereabouts. Um, 
and so they're although they can be used at night their light gathering isn't uh, that terrific but if uh, if people are looking for a dual purpose refractor then um, as I said there are these dual purpose scopes that can be used for nighttime and for daytime use when, with the hydrogen alpha filter uh, screwed in so while we've lost the sun there um, yeah. Gavin has been kind enough to email through another one of his excellent Gavin um, that just popped up there so it's another one of his his shots that he's taken so a there lot of activity go. there there we go beautiful beautiful and uh, once again Gavin's brought out the three-dimensionality of the sun, sun being a big sphere, so you can you can see that uh, spherical aspect and look, lots of uh, filaments there, those dark areas, some active regions, very, very nice indeed. Beautiful. And great okay. encouragement to carry on, Gavin. <laughs> carry on, absolutely. It's a good shot, that one. It's a nice, nice image. I'd like to see if I can, um, where are we? Let's see if I can zoom in on that one a bit. Yep. Not sure how that's looking. It's a bit better. A bit, bit more of a zoom in there. So good detail and, in there. And ladies and gentlemen, please realize that, that the sun is never the same two days running or even an hour, <coughs> excuse me, an hour running because uh, it is constantly changing. That is yeah. the, uh, unlike, you know, un unlike the nighttime sky, you know, constellations don't change. In a lifetime effectively okay we might get a nova or hopefully a supernova coming up the planets do change particularly jupiter the moon we see different aspects of the moon depending on liberation but the sun uh, is always guaranteed to uh, to be different from one day to the next even from uh, one hour to the next and it can be quite a, a nice uh, project to look to spot the differences from uh, one hour to the next or from one from one day to the next. So I think that might just um, do us for okay, this then. session, Russ, unless yep. the sun's going to peak back out, but I don't think it is at the moment. Well, I've got, uh, no, I've, uh, I've got some fairly uh, good sunshine here, but we've seen the best of the sun. Yeah, cool. This, so cool. I think um, following this, we've got uh, at 3.30, we've got a, um, a quiz so for those who are watching now, if you want to come back at 3.30 for the 3.30 stream, we will have a quiz. Uh, it's a test yourself quiz. Grab yourself a notepad and a pen. Um, and uh, Fraser from the Astronomical Society of South Australia is going to host that quiz for us. And he's got uh, a series of questions that he's going to ask uh, with certain timing to get, it, to get the answers in for yourself. It's just testing against yourself. So it's kind of like golf. In that, if you go and Google the answer, you're only cheating yourself. That's right. Um, so, see what you know when the quiz starts, and see see how many you can get right. Um, there's no prizes for first place, other than just knowing you've got the answers and, and you've got the the understanding. So, um, we'll be back at three thirty for that. Um, once again, thank you to Skywatch Australia. Thank you to uh, Sidero Trading. The raffle tickets are still there. It's the some still available. They're selling nicely. Um, thank you to the person who just purchased 10 in a row. Uh, that was nice of you. Um, and they'll be drawn tonight around about between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Um, so, Russell, thank you very much for um, – whoa, he's turned white. Here he is. He's oh, back. Yeah. Thank you I'm very back. much for, for uh, and... <laughs> sharing your uh, telescope. Uh, well, the telescope, yes, and sharing the sun with us. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, uh, I've, got a, I've got one last question for you. Terence has just followed up. He's got a nine in nine and a quarter two three five zero. Oh, so even with a filter, am I wasting my time at that magnification? In which case, can you recommend a HA scope? Not at all. Uh, you're wasting your time with that. You'll get some beautiful closer up uh, views of sunspots and active regions with that so not at all you won't you won't get the full uh, solar disk in your uh, field of view but you'll get some lovely close-ups of uh, active regions on the sun so um not at all a waste uh, make use yeah. of it there we go Good equipment. 
All right. Well, we'll I'll be I'll be back in uh, thirty five minutes. Russell, thank you very much for um, giving up your time today, and uh, thank you, and thank you, weather, for giving us some some blue sky. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining in. That's been wonderful. Thank no you. Worries. See you later, everyone. Good day. Stay safe. Bye.